Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about the PCIe slots that we use to connect graphics cards and other expansion cards to our computer motherboards. Now I'm going to start out with a little bit of the history of motherboard slots to place PCIe in context, and then I'll move on to talk about PCIe lanes and slot sizes and versions and all that other handy to know kind of stuff. In the 1980s, early IBM PCs came with expansion slots known as the XT or AT bus. However, these were later renamed ISA or Industry Standard Architecture slots, and here we've got a 1989 motherboard with eight ISA slots. And the thing about ISA slots is they were used to connect almost everything to the computer motherboard, not just graphics cards, but all the ports you needed on the computer, all the storage interfaces. You had a card, for example, like this one, which gives you uh, the disk interfaces and uh, parallel ports and serial ports that we can find them there. So everything connected initially via ISA slots. Now, the only problem was, as PC technology advanced, ISA slots weren't fast enough for the latest graphics and other cards, and therefore an extended version of ISA called EISA was introduced in 1988, as well as an interface called the VESA Local Bus or VLB in 1992. However, neither of these became that popular, as in 1992 we also saw the introduction of the Peripheral Component Interconnect or PCI expansion slot. As we can see on this 1997 motherboard, for some time we had motherboards with both uh, PCI slots, we've got four of these here, as well as uh, ISA slots. And this board also has an AGP slot, an accelerated graphics port slot. And this was a graphics card only interface on, on motherboards. This was launched in 1996 and it evolved into many different incompatible versions. For example, here we've got another motherboard which has got an AGP slot and five PCI slots, as you can see. This is clearly a different type of slot to the previous AGP port we saw on the previous board. It's longer. This is an AGP times eight slot, an AGP Pro slot. And back in the 90s, when we had all these AGP ports and they constantly were evolving, you had to be very careful to get the right graphics card to match the right slot. They had different voltages. It wasn't that difficult to blow things up by putting the wrong AGP card into the wrong AGP port. However, in 2004, things started to get easier with the launch of PCIe, or Peripheral Component Interconnect Express, as a higher speed version of PCI. And as we can see on this far more recent motherboard, PCIe slots can come in different sizes. So here, for example, we've got three PCIe times one slot and one PCIe times 16 slot, the sort of slot you'd normally put a graphics card in. And to explain the differences between these type of slots, I now need to tell you about how PCIe handles data. Data is communicated to and from PCIe slots in what are called lanes. And so I thought it'd be nice to imagine that data as a fleet of little cars. And so here we have one lane of cars traveling to a PCIe slot. It's a times one slot because there's one lane of cars, and each car here represents a fixed quantity of data. But if we want to get more data to the card, and we can't increase the speed of the card, what we can do is to add more lanes. So if we increase the number of lanes by a factor of four, or in other words, we move to PCIe times four, we get four times as many vehicles, and hence four times the data transfer rate being accommodated. And if we increase again to PCIe times eight, and then PCIe times 16, we double and double again the data throughput of the PCIe slot without having to increase the speed of its underlying electronics. Now, although PCIe increases speed by adding lanes, since 2004 the PCIe standard has been upgraded several times, with the different versions known as PCIe 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 and 4.0. Each of these has a lane speed which is roughly double that of the previous generation, so making our little cars move twice as fast with each PCIe version upgrade. Here in this table you can see all of the theoretical speeds attainable with all of the current PCIe versions using 1, 4, 8 or 16 lanes. Note that 32 times PCIe slots and expansion cards with 32 lanes do exist, but they're very rare indeed. 
Note also that a new PCIe 5.0 standard is expected to be finalised in 2019, with likely speeds as shown in italics in the last line of the table. And yes, a 16 times PCIe 5.0 card will be very fast indeed. In most instances, the physical size of a PCIe slot indicates its number of lanes. So for example, if we look at this fairly modern motherboard, which has got one, two, three, four PCIe slots and three PCI slots, you'll see that we've got a slot here and here, which are PCIe times one, they've got one lane, and we've got a slot here, which is a PCIe times 16 slot, and this has got a 16 lanes. This is where you put your graphics card on this board. However, if we look at the slot down here, you might say, well, it's the same size as this one, which is a PCIe times 16 size slot. However, this is actually a PCIe times four slot. It's only got four lanes inside this actual physically 16 times slot. And so you need to look very carefully at your motherboard when choosing and fitting PCIe devices to make sure you get the best slot for your expansion card. So here, if we look very closely, we can see this second PCIe times 16 length slot is labeled PCIe times four. And if we look very closely indeed, we can also notice it only has electrical pins running for the first quarter of its length. One of the great things about PCIe is the high level of compatibility across versions and slot sizes. So for example, on this motherboard, the PCIe slots are PCIe 2.0. This is a time 16 PCIe 2.0 slot. But here I've got a graphics card, which is PCIe 3.0. But this would work absolutely fine on this board. We could plug this in here like this, go in there and uh, click into place, and this would run at PCIe 2.0 speed. And similarly, if this was say a PCIe 2.0 card and it was a PCIe 3.0 slot, again, things would work at the PCIe 2.0 speed. So you can mix and match across uh, different versions and things will always run at the lower speed of either the card or the slot you're using. Another important thing to note is that it's possible to use an expansion card that requires a low number of lanes in a PCIe slot with a higher number of lanes. So if we, for example, take this card out of here, this is a times 16 card in a times 16 slot, that obviously works fine. But here I've got a USB 3 adapter, which is a PCIe card, a PCIe times one card, and this would normally go into a PCIe times one slot. You put it in somewhere like that, and that would work fine. But you could, if you wanted to, put this into the uh, times 16 slot. So we've got a times one card in a times 16 slot, and that would work absolutely fine. This card needs one lane. It would take just one lane from this card. It would waste all the others. That would work. And you might be thinking, that's absolutely ridiculous. Why would you do that? And on this motherboard, clearly this would be a ridiculous thing to do. This times one card should go into a, a times one slot. But there are situations this can be very useful. So for example, if we look at this motherboard, this is a mini ITX motherboard, a small form factor motherboard. It's only got one slot, a times 16 PCIe slot. And therefore here, if we wanted to fit something like our USB adapter, we'd have no choice. We'd have to put it in here because there's no other option. And again, this is a bit of a sin and a shame. We're wasting all these lanes, but it's good to know you can put a lower lane card into a higher lane slot because in some circumstances, it's a very useful thing to do. Now, the other way around, it's sometimes possible to fit a high lane card into a lower lane PCIe slot. So for example, going back to this motherboard, you might remember here the times four slot is times 16 in length. So we could fit a times eight card or a times 16 card into this slot and it would work if only at times four speed. Now this point made, it's important to be clear that not all lower lane slots will accept a higher lane card. And uh, looking back at this motherboard, you can see why there are physical ends on these uh, times one slots, for example, which stop it happening. So if I bring in the graphics card here, this is the 16 times card, that clearly couldn't be fitted. It wouldn't physically go into that slot. But you can get what are called open-ended slots. So if we look at our final board of the video, this is a Rock Pro 64 single board computer, and it's got a PCIe times four slot, but it's open-ended. So we could potentially take here our 16 times card and plug it in and uh, it would fit. Whether it would work on this particular single board computer would depend on drivers and stuff, but hopefully we've proved a principle. You can sometimes fit, for example, a times 16 card 
into a times four slot. The PCIe standard is, I think, one of the unsung heroes of modern desktop computing. And I hope you found this video useful to learn more about PCIe slots and how they can be used. Certainly, I've had a great time putting this video together because I've had to get out lots of old motherboards like this one. And that's made me think maybe I should make a video all about the history, the evolution of the technologies on PC motherboards. That might make an exciting video. Anyway, that will happen, I think, in the future, but it's now still uh, the present. And uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.